Hey, Martin here from Time and Space. Uh, here I have a copy of Output's Movement. Uh, I was going to give you a run through the interface and have a look through making some sounds with it. Uh, Output's uh, have made this one as an effects plugin as opposed to the virtual instrument or their other titles. It creates effects on top of other sounds and then creates like, rhythmic structure over, uh, within the sound itself. So, for example, you can put it onto another software instrument or onto another audio file, like an Apple Loops or something like that and then you can then manipulate that file with uh, movement to create really cool textures. Um, so let's have a go through the interface and I'll show you through some of the features of it. So the interface is made up of two engines, engine A and engine B. These can be affected individually by the rhythms. Uh, there's rhythm one and two that affect engine A and then rhythm three and four that's affect engine B. Now you can add up to four effects onto each engine and then you can use the rhythms to modulate the parameters of these effects. For example, I can just drag the rhythm three onto the resonance and you'll see it'll then modulate the resonance of that, of that dial. Um, right click again, I can then clear that association. Um, so yeah, so that, that's quite, quite a fun way of making really good movement really quickly within your tracks. Engine A uh, has two rhythms and engine B has two rhythms. You can't use the two rhythms from engine A on engine B, so you can't use the orange ones on the blue uh, or the blue on the orange, just keep them to their own individual section. But you've got a lot of control within each one anyway. So if I go into rhythm two, for example, uh, and onto distortion over here, you can see the uh, rhythm engine itself. You can choose uh, to what, how you want it to behave. So you can either have a step sequencer an LFO, which you can choose the modulation rate in different shapes. And there's also a sidechain input, which you can use from your host as a standard sidechain input. So let me start making some noises. So if I turn on movement off, this is just a straight square wave. We run through a sawtooth at the same time. Just a really simple signal input coming in. I'm doing this just so I can demo the power of movement without having lots of sounds going into it. So we'll see, usually in context, you probably would use this on something that's got a bit of rhythm already in it. So you can use it on a bass loop or, or a drum track or whatever you want to use. Uh, but so just to show the power of movement, I'm just using a really simple oscillated sign, uh, generated sign. So if I uh, turn movement on and then go into the presets up here, uh, the preset menu's got a category system built into it. So you can quite quickly navigate through all the presets, uh, single them out. So if I click on one of these ones here, See, it's already starting to manipulate my sound. Let's create something a bit more fast, eh? Uh, dirty is always going to be good, isn't it? For example, if I take this preset here, uh, I can start manipulating it myself if I want to. Uh, these, these presets are really designed for sort of jumping sections, so you can then go in and edit them how you wish. If I close the preset panel now, I've got my pad here, so I can sweep between how effective engine A and engine B are with my input sound. I can also adjust my wet dry mix up here, back to the input signal to the wet mix. So for example, right, so if I go into here, I can add an extra effect, so let's add a filter, and then I can play with, for example, resonance. Uh, I still cut off. That's quite fun. 
So with that motion there, if I was to get hold of my LFO, which you can see here is bouncing backwards and forwards quite nicely on the rate, so it's going to three bar loop. So if I grab this dial node here and drop it onto the cutoff, you'll see it will slowly bounce across. So if I hold down my keys, the filter is then sweeping in time with the LFO. I can adjust how aggressive it is on my effect by pulling this dial in here, and therefore it adjusts just how much of the variance it's going to have on my initial input signal. So you can hone in the parameter. So that's quite cool. So if I if I was to go to LFO one and drop it on the resonance at the same time, so it's a bit more scatty, it creates some pretty interesting texture there. That's cool. Um, let's go one further this then. So on the wet dry mix, let me right click that and assign it to XY. Uh, XY slider is this pad in the middle here, so it's how much effect this has got on it. So as I come away from here goes up. So a little bar here, you see, so from down here it goes up. And if I do it that way, from here it goes down on the effect. Right. As you can see, it's created a nice bit of movement in that. And remember, this is just a really simple signal input I'm using here, so I'm not putting in anything that's complex to start off with. So if I go into rhythm three here, and have a look at what's going on, the rate dial, which is how fast the LFO will modulate, so you can go from bars into divisions, so you do up to 64 eighth, which is how quickly it's oscillating. Um, we can use LFO 4 to modulate the rate rather than it's being fixed. If I turn off engine A, you can just hear. And if I change to a step sequence, you can see a bit better what's going on. So LFO 4 is making LFO 3 bounce backwards and forwards. If I turn this flux off, it will just ping at an eighth rate across the step sequencer. I get random to randomize the pattern that's playing. And if I turn flux back on again, you'll see the sine wave of LFO 4 is then making it bounce backwards and forwards at a random velocity. Basically. So I'm putting it in a bit you'll see they'll be a bit more uniformed in the way it's behaving. But, so yeah, a lot of control in here. All right, so let's have a look at putting output on an audio signal as opposed to a virtual instrument. So here I have an Apple Loops file stuff I've dragged in uh, as a lead synthesizer. So if I turn movement off, this is what it sounds like without movement on it. That's quite cool. So if I turn my movement back on, and I play through some of the presets here. For example, so now I can play around a bit further. So the cutoff at the moment has already been modulated by LFO3. But if I don't want it to do that, I can clear that modulation rate uh, and then minimize this. If I assign this to my XY pad, I can then bring that back a bit. And then as I move, We'll have a filter sweep go across. And let's put FO4 back on the resonance.
So let's have a look through the sidechain input now. So what I've done here inside of my host is I've created a sidechain channel with an input signal. Um, I've muted this one off from the server area out, but I've also duplicated it, so I've got an output version. So if I hit mute on that, this is what my sidechain is going to be. It's a simple drum track. Right, so if I go back onto my track here, uh, I've turned all the other LFOs off, so you can literally just hear what I'm doing with this LFO1. So if I pop LFO1 onto the volume control, at the moment it's just using a sine wave to generate the pulse. But if I go onto sidechain, and then in my host, assign my sidechain channel, so I've named it sidechain, you can hear it's already doing it. Uh, you can also use it as a duck mode rather than pulse, so it sucks out, which is a bit more pumpy. That's just on volume, which is quite aggressive, so if I turn down a bit. If I turn back on my other rhythms now. Obviously now I've got my sidechain set up, I can go on to other inputs as well. If I want LFO3, for example, I can go to sidechain, it will use the same input pulse, and then I've then got individual controls to adjust how aggressive that's going to be. And if I turn my drums back on, this is without movement on. A, and then all B, and then sure all. So as you can see, there's a lot of control you can do in here. Uh, it's a great bit of fun, to be honest. Now, the guys output have obviously created a really good owner's manual that comes with it. Um, I've actually printed mine off. So if you if you do want to really get under the hood of this, get onto the PDF that uh, comes with it, and um, it's um, yeah, it's a good good little tool. And look, there's a little also a question mark function here that tells you what all the parameters are doing that's on the screen. So yeah, it's a good it's a good tool to um, to make some really good noise with. But also, if you're new to this side of things, it's a great way of learning how to play around with oscillators and, and arpeggiators and just really get some good fun sounds coming out really easily and give you a nice bit of input and it looks cool as well. I hope you found this walkthrough useful. If you want any additional information, please check out our website at www.timespace.com.